Hi, my name is Leanna Pisani, and I'm a recent graduate of the Master of Arts Communication and Culture program at Ryerson and York Universities in Toronto, Ontario. My presentation today is Performative Embodiment and the Selfie, Defining the Political Feminist Selfie. Please ignore any downtown Toronto sirens or honking cars, and let's get into this. Political selfies are no longer a singular genre of selfies. This category has grown to encompass a multitude of selfies that address ideological statements and concepts through the performance of the selfie taker. There are examples of women all over the world enacting political and feminist gestures through selfies. These enactments may range from selfies in direct response to government legislation or in response to theorized social cultural values such as human rights issues or issues of individual identity and self-representation. Arguably an emerging genre, the spectrum of political feminist selfies presents a salient case study of the selfie's function as an effective medium for performing the body as representation and a selfie object in order to challenge the female body as a site of oppression. I am particularly interested in how self-identifying women, which I'm defining as any person who identifies themselves as a woman, how they use the selfie through the practices and technologies of smartphones and social media as a communication tool to challenge oppressive statements and ideologies. I will be including images in my discussion from both cisgender and transgender women, but will not address gender distinctions beyond the explanation of the selfie campaign. My interest lies only in how self-identifying women explore the self and self-representation through the selfie. Leaders of selfie research, Teresa Senth and Nancy Boehm, have pointed out the irony in the popularity of the term selfie. Despite the words rise to fame, the term and the practice it refers to, quote, remain fundamentally ambiguous, fraught, and caught in a stubborn and morally loaded hype cycle, end quote. When the Oxford Dictionary added selfie to its online dictionary in 2013, they defined it as, quote, a photograph that one has taken of oneself typically one taken with a smartphone or webcam, and uploaded to a social media website." End quote. However, Semp and Bain insightfully identify the selfie as both an image object as well as a practice, something that it seems Oxford's definition hints toward but doesn't quite specify. The selfie as a photograph is the object, a captured still image. As Oxford has observed through the caveat of their definition, the selfie is most often shared and that begins to describe the practice. Thinking of the selfie as a practice, as they've described it, as, quote, a gesture that can send and is often intended to send different messages to different individuals, communities, and audiences, end quote, I would like to consider the selfie as an object of layered gestures. Both the image as practice, as the consciously chosen medium for the message, and the embodied gestures in the image as meaningful, and having a symbiotic relationship to the technology. In the case of feminist selfie campaigns, it is both the technology of the camera and the technologies of social media that connect these layers. My discussion of the representations of the female body in these selfies is built on the ideas that bodies are socially constructed and invested with cultural meanings and values. We must begin with the basic understanding that all selfies are performative. Though Irving Goffman's definition of performance is dated, published in 1959, it is the most widely used definition when addressing the performative aspects of selfies because it is a very inclusive definition that does not focus on the particulars of public performance as artistic works. Goffman defines performance as, quote, all the activity of a given participant on a given occasion which serves to influence in any way any of the other participants, end quote. This definition suits the practices of selfie culture as the culture is very much developed through the uses of technologies like smartphones and social media platforms. The selfie is performative on three levels. First, the selfie taker prepares for the image through dress, setting, and pose. Second, the captured image itself is both an image object as well as a performance of selfie culture. And third, the sharing of the selfie on social media platforms is an extension of the performance. Kate Cregan has argued that digital representations of the body in the 21st century have made the body more susceptible to objectification and commodification. However, I argue that the possibilities for identity play provided by new technologies have allowed for widespread challenges of the objectified and commodified female body. Technologies like the smartphone and the smartphone digital camera and social media websites have provided a platform to challenge these norms collectively. I argue that these key characteristics of the practice of the selfie through these technologies 
have allowed for its capabilities for feminist activism. Each of the selfie campaigns I will analyze in this presentation addresses a naturalized practice of gender representation in culture, such as women represented through thin, hairless, cisgender, white bodies. Through the posting of these, therefore, feminist selfies to social media, the selfie takers are rewriting these gender norms. The feminist political selfie, then, is any selfie that enables female identity play and autonomy and challenges through the image as object as well as through its life on social media any form of oppression against women, particularly at the site of the body. The intersection of postmodernism and feminism and the idea of rewriting gender becomes particularly useful when examining how the digital aspect of selfie culture and the culture of feminist selfie campaigns comes into play. The social aspect of feminist selfie campaigns harkens back to the sociality of the Polaroid image, which can be used as a basis in understanding the social aspect of the selfie. The 2010 publication from performance and screen studies scholar Peter Buse sheds light on why selfies have become a ubiquitous and powerful instrument through an exploration of the cultural forgetting of the Polaroid. Buse argues that, quote, the obsolescence of a technology does not necessarily mean the absolute passing of a cultural form but rather the modification of already existing practices, end quote. In many ways, the selfie has become the new Polaroid in its creation and practices. The Polaroid, like the selfie, could be defined as the image as object, as the Polaroid camera literally produced an image object, as well as a cultural practice. Buse highlights one of the propellers of the selfie phenomenon. He said, quote, the basic leisure activity here is surely the near simultaneous pairing of taking and showing, of production and consumption, end quote. The Polaroid eliminated the need for a third party developer, as well as the weeks of waiting for developed film, and digital photography has remained a modification of that practice. In the summer of 2014, a significantly popular political feminist selfie campaign erupted from Turkey. This international campaign has literally laughed at the words of a national politician. That summer, Turkish Deputy Prime Minister Bülent Arınk said in a speech that women, quote, should know what is decent and what is not decent. She should not laugh loudly in front of all the world and should preserve her decency at all times, end quote. The response to Arink's sexist words was a barrage of selfies of women laughing, posted to social media sites, Twitter, and Instagram. This included a contribution from Emma Watson, the United Nations Goodwill Ambassador slash feminist it girl since July 2014. The women, selfie takers while acting a selfie object, embody the gesture of laughing to directly challenge his speech. They used these hashtags, meaning resist laughter, laughter, and resist women in Turkish, respectively, to link more than 300,000 images together. Without making this political selfie movement an effort in understanding Turkish culture, simply focusing on the selfie as resistance, as a feminist cultural movement, we can see how the selfie has emerged as a tool for political activism. Social media has also helped another political selfie movement quickly gain momentum. The Montreal Gazette published a story on March 7, 2015 about Canadian Bray Carnes, a self-identifying woman who has also identified herself as transgender. Carnes initiated a political feminist selfie campaign after it was reported that amendments were made to the original Bill C-279 in Canada. According to Open Parliament, this bill proposed changes to the Canadian Human Rights Act and Criminal Code regarding including gender identity as a prohibited ground of discrimination. In 2013, the bill passed the initial stages of consideration, but in March 2015, Conservative Senator Donald Platt and the Conservative government introduced an amendment that later led to the death of this bill under consideration of the Senate. These amendments would force transgender women to use men's washrooms and transgender men to use women's facilities. This amendment and the denial of Bill C-279 arguably put many individuals in danger and it is ignorant of the spectrum of gender identities while limiting who is legally able to identify as a woman. Carnes posted a mirror selfie standing in a washroom designated for males only and held up the sign, Plett put me here, calling directly on the attention of Senator Plett. A number of bathroom selfies have been contributed to Karn's movement on three social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The immediacy of the smartphone selfie allowed for this movement to grow at a high speed, and social media creates a platform for selfie communities of solidarity. A 
Amelia Jones suggests that by taking self-portraits, women are speaking to the fetishizing of the female and or feminine and or colored body, simply by allowing the body to become representation and the object of the image. If we accept this idea, then performative feminist selfies are doubly responsive. The act and gesture of a self-identifying woman taking a selfie with the body as the object is the first layer in which she responds to this fetishization. The second layer of this response is the conscious use of the body as representation of an active feminist gesture through social media channels. The Chinese body hair selfie began gaining popularity in summer 2014 on a site often considered to be the Chinese equivalent of Twitter. It all began on July 17, 2014 as a sort of competition, which concluded as more of a feminist challenge considering there was actually no material prize to be won. Within just five days, the original competition post received thousands of selfie submissions. Despite the lack of a material prize, this selfie campaign garnered a lot of media attention, and a year later, underarm hair selfies are still being posted as a part of this movement. In the United States, the underarm hair movement has shifted to become what one Instagram account calls Lady Pit Selfies. These body hair selfies are archived using the hashtags Lady Pit Hair, Armpit Hair Don't Care, and Harriet. The Lady Pit Hair Instagram account shows that one woman dyed her underarm hair pink, matching the hair on her head, which is significant as pink is traditionally considered to be representative of the female gender. Another photo shows blue underarm hair, significant for appropriating the color traditionally representative of the male gender. One woman's selfie features underarm hair decorated with tiny blue flowers, and this one's my favorite. Decorating her underarm hair by adorning it with flowers, historically used to represent femininity and female genitals, is certainly an interesting play on the dominant view of a feminine underarm and sends a clear message. Hair removal is not necessary to be feminine or to identify as a woman. These body hair selfie campaigns, like the Turkish laughing selfies, document a feminist performance. An interesting aspect about feminist body hair selfies is that they are very directly speaking to women's bodies as an object of the male gaze, as discussed by Laura Mulvey. The Turkish laughing selfies speak to a particular behavior, using the body to represent that behavior and the selfie to document it. Body hair selfies use the body as representation to talk about the body itself and how it should be represented outside of a curated performance. To use Laura Mulvey's words, body hair selfies cir circulate the cisgender female body in everyday life, and contribute to liberating the female body as a site of oppression. Contemporary photographer Ina Lowenberg argues that, for women in particular, engaging in, quote, self-portraiture is a way to keep control of their own representation, end quote. All of the selfie campaigns discussed share in common that they challenge popular representation of the cisgender woman's body as object of the male gaze, as exploited through other images of the body as object, and as a site of oppression. This is true even though the self-identifying women who post these selfies do not always explicitly claim that they are doing so with feminist motive. Through these feminist body selfies, the individual allows her body to become the direct object of the photo as well as the representation of her feminist gesture. While the Turkish laughing selfies portray behavior frozen in the image and respond directly to the words of Bülent Arink, these body selfie campaigns freeze a gesture wherein the body itself becomes the object of feminist challenges. The body is a site of oppression as well as a tool being used to challenge that oppression. Tejas Harad has written in Economic and Political Weekly that self-portraiture, quote, is associated with the art of painting and is considered a serious pursuit while the selfie is something spontaneous and fun, an act of self-indulgence, end quote. When we do consider that 18th century female artists and even 1970s feminist artists were not taken seriously until well after the time that their works were created and performed, then referring to selfies as an act of self-indulgence is on trend historically. Dr. Pamela Rutledge's blog post for Psychology Today questions the selfie as one of two extremes. Selfies, narcissism, or self-exploration? The News Herald asks in an article, are all those selfies making us narcissists? Meanwhile, My Daily suggests that selfies aren't good for your health. And CNN published a video on March 11, 2015 asking, are selfies causing people to go under the knife? Selfie researcher Anne L. Burns argues that, quote, online commentary about the use and nature of selfies has a regulatory social function in that there is a connection between the discursive construction of selfie practice and the negative perception of selfie takers, end quote. 
Burns discusses how online commentary about selfie culture, denoting the protocols, reflects back onto the practices of selfie culture. This reflection works as a control mechanism, in the same way that the male gaze has traditionally controlled the normalized view of the female body in media culture. Negative media coverage of selfies is a way for society to police the culture. The women of the feminist art movement in the 1970s made important strides to challenge these views of women perpetuated well beyond the 18th century. We see it in the feminist art movement and mimicked in contemporary selfie culture. As Sempton Baim has said, quote, when people pose for political selfies, we need more accurate language than that afforded by 19th century psychoanalysis to speak about what people believe themselves to be doing and what response they are hoping to elicit, end quote. Throughout the discussions of selfies as encouraging narcissistic behaviors, feminist selfie campaigns continue to emerge. Since the summer of 2014, many other feminist selfie campaigns continue to make headlines in popular culture. There have been mamming selfies in which women take selfies of their breasts to promote regular mammogram testing. Women are posing for selfies while holding feminine hygiene products using the hashtag just a tampon to destigmatize public discussions of menstrual health. Crop top selfies directly responded to the Oprah magazine for their summer 2015 article asserting that women can try crop tops, quote, if and only if you have a flat stomach, end quote, archiving images using the hashtags rock the crop and rock the crop top. A July 2015 article from Elle magazine announces that, quote, selfies are good for girls and they may be the greatest visual feminist act since the famous bra burners of the 70s unsnapped and lit up. Reinforcing the connection between the cultural practice of selfies, feminist selfie campaigns, and artists of the 1970s feminist art movement. In popular culture, it seems that there are only selfie takers and selfie receivers. However, no one fits solely into one of those categories. This presentation has explored the political and feminist reasons self-identifying women take selfies, and through their practices of performing selfies as images, objectifying their own frozen bodies, and sharing these images online, these women have contributed to the construction of selfie culture. Selfie takers are also receivers of selfies and rewrite protocols of selfie culture, further defining the form and function of the selfie. Despite media outlets like Time Magazine and The Guardian announcing the imminent death of the selfie, living from 2012 to 2015, the selfie was born much earlier than 2012 and will live on well beyond 2015. Jonathan Jones, writing for The Guardian, calls selfies, quote, an idiotic travesty of the human image, as well as, quote, an attack on the moral self. With this logic, every self-portrait should be considered as such. Selfie culture is not a perversion of portraiture. It's a progression, a portrait in social media form. With traces to the medieval mirror, painted self-portraits, analog self-portraiture, photo booth technology, the Polaroid image, digital self-portraiture, and now the selfie and social media technology, quote, we have drawn, carved, sculpted, and painted images of ourselves for millennia, end quote. That's from Walker Retberg. The selfie belongs to a long history of efforts in self-representation, and the technologies developed to assist in that effort, including diaries, photo albums, and memoirs, as well as a photographic image. As these technologies of representation have developed, the user has been provided more freedom for representational play. Women have helped define the genre of feminist political selfies through explorations of the self and female autonomy using smartphone cameras and social media websites. We are able to archive these selfies through social media hashtags and visibly see the culture evolve in online albums. While selfie culture is not exclusive to females, the fact that more women are found taking selfies according to Selfie City highlights the importance of selfies as a tunneling into issues of female identity representations and play in contemporary society. As demonstrated through examples of feminist selfie movements within the contemporary culture, self-identifying women have rewritten the selfie as an instrument of social change. They have rewritten the selfie as an object capable of challenging traditional views and representations of women and the female body. Quote, these performative images are still self-portraits in the sense that they convey to the viewer the very subject who is responsible for staging the image, and yet, through their very exaggeration of the performative dimension of the self, clearly they profoundly shift our conception of what a self-portrait is. That's from Amelia Jones in 2002. 
The feminist political self-portrait, no matter the part of the woman's body performed in the image, challenges popular representation of the cisgender woman's body as an object of the male gaze, as exploited through other images of the body as an object, and as a site of oppression and cultural control. Thank you so much for watching my presentation. I really hope that I helped you reconsider the ways you think about selfies.